Hello, welcome to our flip lesson on how we can use parametric functions to solve problems in the real world. Now, first off, what you're looking at here are answers to the homework you were given the last time we saw each other. So you can take a couple seconds to check that out. And now let's take a look at some real world problems. There is a handout that goes along with this. You can see it in Google Classroom and print it out. Um, and your job is to take good quality notes. You might want to write down some of the things that I talk about that I have not written down to help you understand better what's going on. You also need your calculator out and ready to go. So problem number one, suppose a baseball is hit from a starting height of four feet with an initial velocity of 45 miles per hour and the angle of elevation, the angle at which you're hitting this ball is 60 degrees. If you are standing 115 feet away from the ball, will you be able to catch it? And in this case, we're going to do the acceleration due to gravity as negative 16 T squared. T of course, being time, the amount of seconds. Ooh, the amount of seconds. So wait a minute, we've got, we've got height involved, that's a Y value. We've got a distance, a horizontal distance, 115 feet away, and we've got time. Oh, we have all the ingredients for a perfect parametric function. Let's try it. So first thing I did is I, I made a little sketch here. I have my batter. The ball is going to be hit four feet above ground out here, hoping to catch the ball at 115 feet. And this ball is going to be hit and we all know it's going to follow this parabolic arc. Now let's see if we can come up with our two uh, parametric functions, the X and the Y as a function of time. So we know that we're 115 feet away from the batter. That is our horizontal distance. We also know that there is a height component and we need to know the time. Will the ball reach 115 feet at a time when the height is reasonable for us to make a catch. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the path of this ball. And in particular, notice I can make a little right triangle down here. Now that right triangle has this, this distance the ball has traveled in one second. And it also has the horizontal and vertical component of that ball's path. I'm going to blow that triangle up over here. We know the angle of elevation is initially 60 degrees. And this X value is our horizontal component. And the Y value is the vertical component. And this 45 miles per hour is part of the um, actual distance the ball traveled. But there are two things that we have to kind of worry about. One is this is a rate. It's not a distance. And we'll get to that. But two. Look at the units, miles per hour. These units are measured in feet. So I don't like that it's miles. I think we have to convert this to feet. An hour seems a little uh, excessive. The ball is not going to be in the air in terms of hours or even minutes. The ball is going to be in the air in terms of seconds. So let's first convert the 45 miles per hour into um, 45 minutes per second and see how that goes. So or not 45 minutes per second, but some minutes per second. So let's take a look down here. Here's my 45 miles per hour. And in order to convert this to so many um, feet per second, I'm going to have to uh, use some unit analysis. So let's take a look over here. Uh, spoiler alert. Here's the answer. But let's see how we got that. Let's see how we got that. I have over here a cut. Whoop, there you go. Look at that. I know some of you got excited by that. Uh, I have a couple values that are equal to one. I know that one mile is the same as 5,280 feet. And well, now, now you know that. Um, so the question is, which one of these two fractions that represent one should I use in my equation to convert miles per hour into feet? per second. So I think by analyzing the units, this is the one I want simply because we can cancel the miles 
And now we have just feet, and that's what I want here. I want just feet. So we got rid of the miles, and now we have feet. Let's now see if we can't, oh, look, there it goes again. How exciting. Let's see if we can find a good value of 1 to use to get rid of the hours and make them become seconds. So again, there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. So which one of these values would be the best one to put into our equation? Let's see, hours are in the bottom. So if I choose this, where hours are on top, you'll notice the hours cancel. And now we have feet per second. Perfect, look at that, perfect. So now, instead of 45 miles per hour, we can put feet per second. So let's just put that right up there. Fantastic. So, so far, we were able to evaluate this little triangle here. Uh, we converted our units, so we're feet, and everything is feet, and we're in seconds, because the ball is going to be in there in seconds. But part two of our problem was that this is a rate, and I need to make it a time. So I think what I need to do is I need to take 66 feet per second and multiply it by t for time. So this time, whoops, come on up there. This time, if I multiply this by t, I now have converted this hypotenuse into a length not a rate. It's 66 feet per second times the number of seconds. So let's get our parametric equation set up. First of all, let's talk about x. We know that x is going to be a function of time. So let's see. Here's x. I know this is 60 degrees, and I know the hypotenuse is 66t. Oh, hey, that's the cosine function. Oh, as a matter of fact, this is that right triangle we've been using this entire unit. We used it for vectors. We used it for polar graphs. And now we're using it for parametric functions. Remember, x is r times the cosine of theta. So we can write this as 66t times the cosine of 60. Now let's talk about y. Now, why is the height? And there are three different factors affecting the height. So from this triangle, one of those factors is cosine of 60 gave us x. So the sine of 60 will give us y. So we're going to do r sine of 60. That's y. But what else is affecting the height? Well, gravity. Gravity is pulling this thing downwards. So I need this negative 16t squared which again is giving us this, this parabolic curve. And finally, I'm not starting on the ground. I'm starting four feet off the ground. So I need to put plus four. Now, these are our two parametric functions. And I'm going to use these to check to see how high the ball is when we're 115 feet away. So let me grab these equations. I'm going to stick them right over here. And let's check, let me get rid of this arc. Let's, okay, let's just get rid of that cut. Let's check to see what our calculator tells us. Now I'm going to pull up my calculator here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to check the mode. I want it to be in parametrics because we're going to graph this in a little while. Also, you'll notice I'm measuring my angles in degrees. So let's go over to degrees. Great. Now we can go to our home screen. So the first thing I'm concerned about is when I've traveled 115 feet, how much time has elapsed? So when this ball, when this ball has flown 115 feet in the air, how many seconds did that take? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, okay, let's go ahead and let's, let's see. When my x value, my horizontal distance is 115, what is my t? So going into my calculator here, and you may want to write this down. Um, I don't I kind of ran out of space. I think if I take that 115 and divide it by 66 times the cosine of 60, that's going to tell me how many seconds this ball 
took to go 115 feet. And I see it's, it's, it's that. And if you want, you can, you can convert that to a decimal. It looks like it's just about three and a half seconds. So in three and a half seconds, this ball's traveled 115 feet. Now I need to see how high up in the air that ball is going to be when it's traveled 3.48 seconds. So that means I'm going to have to take this 3.48 seconds and plug it into this equation for t. And that will give me my height. So again, in this equation right here, I'm going to take that, that 3.48 dot 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 seconds. Oh, geez. And I'm going to plug it in here for t, and I'm going to plug it in there for t. So let's, let's do that. Back to the calculator. I'm going to go back up and grab that, that exact fraction, and I'm going to store it as, as t. Remember, we're in parametric mode, so that's a t now. And let's just type this in and see. Negative 16 t squared plus 66 t times the sine of 60 plus 4. And that tells me that the ball is now about 8.9 feet high. So let's go back to this problem and see. My value is 8.9 feet high. So in about three and a half seconds, the ball has traveled 115 feet, and it's, it's 8.9 feet high. Do you think we can catch it? Well, remember, you're sticking your arm up in the air, so, you know, you have some extra height to you. And in three and a half seconds, do you think you could drop back far enough that you could catch this ball? I'm going to argue, yes, I think this ball is catchable, and you ought to be able to get to it. Now, let's go to part two. Part two, you're going to have to pull up the second video because I'm running out of my time here. So let's take a look at part two in the next video where we throw a drone into this problem. I'll see you in a minute.